Now the next thing I want to talk about is cam timing or synchronization. Now I'm going to discuss several methods of cam timing and synchronization. What's important is that you find the method for you that works the best and gives you the best results. The first one I'm going to talk about is utilizing the marks on the cams in relation to the limbs. Now because this is a binary cam system, a two cam, each cable has the exact same load on it at the same time all the way through the draw cycle. As a cable takes up at one end, it lets out at the other, therefore balancing the load. So this allows us to statically time these bows by utilizing cam marks in relation to a limb. First thing you're gonna wanna do is take your limbs and put them both all the way down tight. Then you're gonna wanna look at the cam and where it interfaces the limb. And on this cam here, I can clearly see one, two, three, and I can just see the tip of the fourth mark on the bottom cam. Now, if I flip the bow over and look at the top cam, here I can see one, two, three, and I can just see the top of the fourth mark. So by method one, statically, these cams are both perfectly in time and synchronized with each other. Now, the next method I wanna get into is a little bit different method. It's more of a dynamic timing solution. What I mean by dynamic is statically here, we're looking at the timing at rest, okay? Dynamically, we'd want to look at the timing at full draw, i.e. we'd want to put it on a draw board or another device to draw the bow back, hold it in a specific place, and see where the cams are rotating to. For this method, I would install either the cable stops or the limb stops, either one, slide them to their maximum draw length possible position all the way to the back of the track, lock them down, then I would draw the bow back on the draw bench or draw board, stop the bow wherever one of the stops hit the limb or the cable, and if the other cam had not advanced to that position, I would then let the bow down, put it in the press, and make the adjustments accordingly. Now when we talk about making timing adjustments, I'm always going to refer to what cam is ahead, and I'm always going to shorten the cable on the cam that is ahead. Because in the world of strings and cables, strings and cables never shrink. They always grow, stretch, or elongate because everything's under load, under tension, exposed to heat, humidity, etc. Things just simply don't shrink. They always stretch and elongate. So when making timing adjustments or even draw length adjustments with your string or yokes, you're always gonna want to go after the cable or string that is stretched, that is elongated. So if I was to slide the limb stops or cable stops all the way to their maximum adjusting point, draw the bow back on the draw bench, and the top cam hit the stop first, I'm then going to shorten the take up cable that is attached to that cam. Now each cam has a take up and a let out cable. This is the top cable, the top take up cable, because as I draw the bow back, the top cam takes up that cable. Now at the bottom, this is the bottom take up cable. As I draw the bow back, the bottom cam will rotate and take up this cable. That's the end, that's the cable I'm always going to shorten, the take up one to put a cam back in time. Always shortening, never lengthening. Now the last method I wanna talk about for timing, honestly, is the one that I use. Because it's the simplest, it's easy to do, you can do it in the shop, you can do it on the field course, you can do it at the range. I quite simply use a machinist ruler or another instrument that measures in very small amounts. This goes all the way down to 60 fourths of an inch. On the other side, it goes in tenths and fiftieths of an inch. Now the reason why I use this is because it's a lot better than a regular ruler. A regular ruler goes in eighths of an inch or sixteenths of an inch. That's too broad of a range for me. Now, what I'm measuring is I'm gauging cam rotation in relation to the tip of the cam right here and the yoke where it comes off the cam. I'm going to effectively measure this gap right in here. The gap between the cam, the tip of the cam, and the yoke. And I'm gonna set that gap on the top cam and on the bottom cam exactly the same. The reason for doing this, like I mentioned before in reference to the limb marks, 
Both cables share the exact same amount of load or torque as the bow is drawn, shot, or fired. As one cable takes up, the other one lets out. They are balanced, it's a balanced cam system. So that tells us that statically, in time, they will both rotate the same amount and stop at the same place. And that's real simple to do. I'm gonna show you right here. I'll put the machinist ruler right at the tip of the cam. I'll measure from this point right here to the center of the string yoke. And here I am 0.75 inches. We'll go down to the bottom one and take a look at that. From the tip of the cam to the center of the string yoke, I am 0.75 inches. So it's exactly three quarters of an inch from the tip of the cam to the center of the yoke at both top and bottom. This tells me that this bow is actually perfectly in time.